What's up guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. We're back again this week with another video for you. So in today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to build yet another quadruple robot. If you haven't seen our other quadruple robot videos, be sure to check those out. They're really entertaining and informative. This quadruple robot is built out of 100% recycled 3D printed parts from my previous projects. If you want the proper 3D printed STL files, just comment down below and we'll send them to you. Here are the things you need. On the right here, we have six servo motors and on the left over here we have six more servo motors that's 12 servo motors in total you'll need 12 right here we have these four pieces which will be the legs under these we have the feet and you might be able to recognize these pieces from our last quadruple robot up here we have the body which is this tin foil wrapped rectangle above the rectangle we have these four pieces that look like this Next to them we have these eight pieces, the spinning parts of the servo motor. Above them we have these long screws, about eight of them. Here we have four small screws to hold on to these pieces with the servo motors. And that's pretty much all you need. And you also need some jumper wires that are be this size. It's better if you use small jumper wires. You have to drill four holes inside the body of the robot. And these holes you're going to put these things through the white spinning parts of the servo motor. So we'll do that right now. So after you've done this step, connecting these pieces onto the body of the robot, set any four servo motors, like I did over here, onto 90 degrees. You can do this in the code or you can do it by your hand. So set them to 90 degrees and attach them on. So this one will pretty much go over here. And then wait till it connects on. And after it connects on, you just screw it in with the screws. So here I've connected the front two servos and I screwed them in with the small screws. There's four small screws. One, two, and then three, four will go over there. Okay, so now we have the four servos connected on this platform. This is going to be our base for our robot. And let's move on. The next step is to get four more servos and connect each of them like this. So now all the edge servos, the four we just put on, are set to either 180 or zero. Now the next thing you have to do is get this piece over here, this 3D printed part, and slide it in over here and put the screw through here. You need four of them, four of the longer screws, four of the longer screws and four of these pieces. Alright guys, we were also done connecting these four pieces onto these extra four servos. So, so far there's eight servo motors on this robot and there's four legs. The next step is to connect all these blue pieces, the rest of them, there's four of them and there's four servos over there. Like this. And you can screw them in or glue them on. You connect the next 3D printed parts onto the servos like this and then you just glue them on or you can screw them on from here and you also put a little bit of glue and connect the parts of the servos over there I should stop wait I should stop dancing so these servos just come snap on over here and you can screw them on from here and you need to do that for all four here's how the robot looks like and now it's time to do the wiring Here are the assortment of wires. There's 12 of each color, except this one. I also mixed up the white ones because I have enough orange. But you get the point. These are all the source pin wires, which are the yellow ones. Even over here, there's yellow wire. Those are the source pin. There's 12 of them. So these are all the 5V pins. All the 5V wires, which are red on the servo motors. And then these are the GNDs. Black on the servo motor, they're brown. So here's how your robot should look after you extended all the wires. Black, orange, and yellow matches with brown, orange, and yellow. We did that for all the other 12 servos, and here we are moving to the next step. The next step is to build the board. We're going to be using a breadboard to prototype our board, and we're going to do this by extending the GND about four times. So we're going to extend it by connecting one wire here, and then over here. Now what you have to do is get four more wires, any type of four wires, they don't have to be matching color and extend them like this you can see that every time you extend it you get left with three squares these three are for each leg because each leg has three servo motors and then three times four is twelve so there's going to be twelve squares over here so do that and and there, that's all the GNDs for the whole robot now we have to do this for the five V's so we did the same thing for these three, there's 12 5 V's and 12 of these, 12 GNDs. And over here you can see that there are 
a bunch of digital pins. There's 11 on this side and 1 on this side. So that's 12, 12 for each of the servos. There's 2 through 13. Now we're going to put a bit of glue over here and here just to connect this on top. You can do a time lapse. Now we'll be connecting on the wires. Here, the black one is the GND, which goes right over here in one of these squares. The middle one is the 5V, which goes in any one of these squares. And then this one can go onto the digital pins. I'll connect all the 5V and GND, and then I'll talk to you guys about the digital pins a bit later because they're a bit complicated. Okay, we're done now. Okay, so from this to the previous robot, you see quite a difference. The first thing that changed when I was halfway done writing the code, I realized that this body, the blue rectangle, was way too big and it wasn't good enough to support the weight of the robot and the battery and the center of gravity wasn't really that stationary in the middle. It kept on moving around, which meant it would tip over really easily. Now we didn't want that, so the first thing I did was I made the blue base much smaller. Before it was around about 7 by 12 centimeters, now it's 7 by 7, it's a square. So that balanced out the center of gravity really well. And the next thing that I did was that I added these little Lego pieces down here for support. Before the robot was very unstable and even with the smaller base it would still kind of sometimes tip over. Now here's a test run of how it works. <laughs> 